If you think I'm going to... Automate. After the priest... The question now, is Whether or not... Syndicast. Strong and reasonable. I like you, Exile. Go on. Do it. Life. We have come to an accord. That which you release. A sliver of the winter of the world.
Life is so brittle. Give yourself to the boy. Relentless assault.
This time, you will find the best. Death's cold grip is An arrow falls. I know where. Hate the get hate. Temptation for the fool, face me! Ultimatum! Face me! Chaos aids me! And my service continues. Chaos laughs, mortal. And fortune is...
Your victories will not continue. The will inspires the flame. Stray too far and find pain. and find pay.
confront that which you release. Lightning lurks within you. Hate begins hate. Tide of death is rapid. You shall suffer your own bile.
hate begets hate. A sliver of the winter of the world. too far and find pay. Confront that which you release. Relentless assault. Hi, this is Wei here. I figured I would cut the video short instead of going like a full hour and uh, mostly because I think I've kind of proven my point with how profitable fucking ultimatum is but <laughs> um, also because I'm quite pleased with how this build has turned out. It's gonna hit 98 soon. Probably can get it to 100 if I wanted to if I really want to spend time on it uh, but I might just, just leave it at 99. We'll see how it goes. Um, I, bet, I mean I haven't really played as much as before mainly because past few days uh, have been work days so I've got other stuff to do as well uh, but whenever I've got time I'll just pop on and just farm a bit 
Uh, let's talk about where the build is currently at and uh, I think what other progression I can go for. Um, so TLDR, this is a Molten Strike of Zenith uh, Juggernaut and it's basically supposed to be an alternative gearing setup to Connor's version and mostly because I think Connor's version is overpriced at the moment. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that's now very inaccessible but also because I feel like uh, Connor's version of Molten Strike, although it does tick off the boxes of being like probably one of the best endgame builds uh, in this current patch, it has the issues of not being very uh, efficient, I feel. Like uh, efficiency in terms of there are a lot of aspects of Jug that aren't really utilized uh, to its maximum potential when it comes to Connor's setup. And I think the reason for that is that, I mean, he tunnel visions into a very a specific loadout because he only wants to hit the really truly end game stuff right which is the like do i don't know 1 billion dps that sort of thing but i'm on the other hand i'm a more i look for builds that are more functional at uh for the particular content that i prefer to do all right and this particular league has mostly been ultimatum okay uh and it's mostly been ultimatum because as you can see ultimatum is uh, <coughs> pretty profitable uh, just raw for all currency alone in the past 34 minutes, I made about 5 divines, I think. Um, I mean, I was a bit lucky. I think on average, in terms of raw currency, you're probably likely to get 5 divines overall in an hour. So this is already a bit above a, luck a lucky streak. Uh, you know, maybe it's on luck on my side. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I decided to make a video and whatever dropped, uh, you know, whatever dropped, I'll just use that in the video. Wait, hold up. Okay, anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I like I like to do ultimatums, and ultimatums generally is pretty rippy content, uh, meaning to say that there are a lot of builds out there who can do T17s. Uh, I mean, maybe they'll, they may not, they might use multiple portals. They will not do ultimatum, and they will not do ultimatum because um, they can't get the, the 10 rounds consistently, right? In this case here, I rather do ultimatum on T16s than to do C17 maps because I fucking hate rerolling maps. Okay, uh, I I don't like the idea of just sitting there spending currency to reroll maps so I can get potential currency out of it. It just doesn't make sense to me. For me, I would rather sell that map off, especially like abominations right now. I've been selling them for 0 0.9 divines. Like, why would I want to run them? <laughs> 0 0.9 divines is like I don't know 150C. So I, I rather just sell them in bulk. So I accumulate a crap ton of these uh, maps and uh, on T16, just sell them in bulk. They're making me, making me pretty good money. Uh, so yeah, uh, the criteria for doing ultimatums. Oh my god, these guys are picking me over maps. The criteria for doing ultimatums generally is uh, you need to be tanky, uh, you need to have decent clear, and you need to have decent DPS, especially in the phases where you have all those bloody skitter bot nonsense. Uh, that those ones are annoying, uh, but yeah, and you should be able to like you should need. I think probably around 200k worth of defenses. I feel 200k EHP is I would think the ballpark for ultimatums. Um, max hit probably about 20k fizz and like 50k LA, LA. Uh and uh, it really depends on the mods you tick. If you don't have conversion, let's say you can't convert fire to something else. Uh, you will never pick the flaming skull stuff, yeah, because they have pen. Um, and so in this case, this build is happy to pick fire skulls because it, it converts all fire to like chaos or, or cold. Um, and you know, I'm not. And, and the funny thing is that this build actually is much better than the gladiator for, for dealing with dots. So you can see me click the dot nodes in gladiator. I will pick all the things that hit me, and now here I pick stuff that actually causes dots and the reason being is that unbreakable is it unbreakable on oh, no, on tiring oh, what's it called um okay stop okay this one yeah uh yeah untiring is like super good recovery as long as you don't have something that kills your recovery uh mainly because it says 1.5 percent of physical damage prevented from hits in the past 10 seconds regenerated as life per second i'm actually preventing a lot of my own self damage from physical so i'm regenerating a lot um so yeah I, i'm happy to deal with dots i can literally stand in like the poison dot and the, the fizz dot and like barely see my hp go down in fact most of the time when my hp drops it's from my own self damage from bone shatter it's not actually from the the, the, the ultimatum itself 
so I need to watch out for my bone chiller stacks. If I feel like uh, my health is starting to like go below like I don't know seventy five percent on the on the on the four point eight, I'll, I'll start to like not attack as often with bone chatter, maybe move around a bit more, that sort of thing. Okay, I'm gonna then cover. Uh, so now now you know my Alice strategy for this league. Uh, I I promise you this. I've played, I've done Abyss, I've done Harvest, I've done what was it, Rogue Exiles, and I always go back to Ultimatum. I always go back to ultimate. It's just too consistent currency, and it's just, it's currency that is easily like um, I don't have to sit there and sell stuff. You know what I mean? I can put catalyst in bulk. I can put uh, like even gems, uh, level gems. I can just put them for like five C off like the cheapest on the market, and they sell pretty quickly. Uh, I get a more mans from this actually. So there's a lot of uh, money making, a lot of stuff that makes you money here that you can like pretty much turn into instant currency. Uh, cards you can turn the currency um, inscribe ultimatums you can do them yourself especially those that drop the vines it, it, it's really good uh, profitability okay and also like the one thing I like about it is that it synergizes very well with maven because you just you just want to decrease the amount of time you spend per map as much as possible right and the same thing you want to apply for maven right you just want to run to the end of the boss and then uh, kill the boss and get the, the chisels and all that and the maven drops are also like pretty uh liquid you know pretty liquid you can sell out pretty easily like i've been selling off the chisels um uh, awakened gems you can just sell like slightly cheaper than market and they would sell um and then boss maps i actually haven't sold them in bulk i should because i've got so many of them um but yeah I, I can sell these in bulk or i can like do them myself i probably will sell this in bulk because i'm not interested not interested in doing bosses uh but yeah uh so that's ultimatum. Uh, let me talk about where I've brought this character to and where my currency has been invested in. So the first couple of videos, like a few days ago, like the first one of a few days ago, had about maybe about 30 mil DPS. Um, I'm probably at close to 60 or 70 now. I think 60 is probably like a pretty accurate amount. Um, it really depends on, well, it depends on how bone shatter stacks I have up. I think 60 is like, if I hit like, 90 bone shatter i think or something like that oh no bone shatter trauma stacks i keep saying bone shatter uh 90 trauma stacks um most of the time you won't get there bosses will die when before you even hit the 50. so um there are very few instances uh, maybe if i do uber it won't matter but right now bone shatter stacks of 90 is just nice to have it's it's nice to ultimate them because stuff just dies instantly uh and then you can get a pretty high amount of stacks just by standing still and hitting uh, but yeah, let me let me talk about the changes so far. Um, most of the changes have been on the passive tree because I've decided to I figure out which which were more uh, efficient passives. And I mean, if you notice, I've actually dropped two megalomaniacs because I just feel like the points are better spent on uh, elsewhere. So I'll give you an example. I dropped the two megalomaniacs with the extra points I've gone here. And one thing I've discovered with uh, trauma is that more duration is always like better right more duration means more damage and the multipliers are quite insane so if i get like this amount of duration here this is like 30 percent more damage effectively and if i go here it's 14 percent more damage so potency of will is now my annoyed it was uh what was it blood siphon this is 14 more damage on top of blood siphon <laughs> uh, okay so not only does this give you like trauma damage and give you uh, trauma we call uptime yeah so you get like you have a longer duration of your traumas so you have like if you're mapping quite quickly you still have like 20 to 30 trauma at any time rather than like 15 or 20 so definitely duration is like really nice the next thing is about duration is that it gives you good quality of life and the quality of life is on like your your buffs so a mortal call has like really long duration especially more duration support so um i have a mortal call here uh, and then I also have Purifying Flame with Consecrated Ground uh, creation. So I create Consecrated Ground. Consecrated Ground has increased duration. So I cover basically the entire arena of Ultimatum with Consecrated Ground. Um, and that's really nice too because, you know, free heal, right? Uh, and then Inferno Cry gets a really long duration as well. Um, so if you see here, okay, I, it doesn't proc because there's nothing here. But I, I think I can get duration up to like about 9 seconds. And then the cooldown is like, four or something so i have like double the uptime um 
yeah, I can just pretty much keep the buff up at all times. And it's like 5% physical damage as extra fire per 5 power. And then the bosses are around is like 20% power, uh, 20 power, so it's like 20% more damage effectively. Around there, maybe 18% sorry. Um, so this is like free. I've added this in. Uh, they all link to enhance because you know cooldowns. Purifying Flame gets insane AOE because of quality. Infernal Cry gets a uh, cooldown reduction rate, a cooldown recovery rate. Uh, same with Immortal Call, cooldown reduction, cooldown recovery. Uh, I've taken away the the Canary. <laughs> I've taken away the Vengeful Cry. It actually doesn't help me at all. It doesn't really proc L anymore, to be honest. <laughs> so uh, I've decided to drop it entirely. Uh, so I I think I moved the what was it here? I moved the Frost Blink here. Yeah, I just moved it here. Uh. Sniper's mark, marks hit on hits the same. I have moved away from. Oh, I ran out of gold. <laughs> I, I moved away from uh, this links because I wanted the consecrated ground. I wanted the purifying flame proc from cast damage taken. It actually is pretty consistent procs because you take so much cell damage. Uh, so you basically, as I said, you cover the whole arena with it. That's nice. Um, Leaf slam is linked to faster attacks. I can probably link this to rage support. Uh, I haven't actually thought about it too much I, I think i like the, mo the raw mobility without like rage generation but i also think like yeah maybe may, like 19 percent attack speed is conditional is like kind of meh i feel so yeah i'm just left as faster attacks uh purity ice is here with blood rage or uh, eternal blessing and power i don't think i've changed this okay let's talk about um gear wise i don't think i changed anything gear wise maybe this ring i i saw this ring on the market and i was like wow um for seven, for it was ten divines, and, and I told him, you know, I, I think I will pay seven for this, and he said sure, seven's cool. Uh, but what this is is basically it. He probably got this off a of mirror, it's like uh, something he got off a map. He didn't use a mirror on it, okay? Uh, and and he basically he lucked out. This is like full T ones, except for the uh, accuracy. That's a T two, uh, and uh, it, it basically uh, doubled I think every roll. So you get double the strength, double the dexterity. Uh, accuracy doubled and life doubled. So, um, dexterity is nice here. Okay, so one thing I've discovered is that dexterity is uh, actually something I value, and mainly because uh, is this pillar of the cage god has one percent increased attack speed per ten dexterity. So it actually gives you more return than accuracy for attack speed. Um, dexterity also happens to give you accuracy, like you get uh, two accuracy per one dexterity. So. <laughs> Uh, this basically dexterity gives you attack speed. So if you you don't, you won't compromise strength at the expense of dexterity. Meaning you won't like have instances where you take out strength and add dexterity. But wherever you can actually put dexterity, you want to have dexterity. So that's why I've kind of like pivoted a bit. Now my dexterity is at 440, uh, which is not too bad. Um, yeah. Uh, b -b -b not much else here has changed. I think. Same, same, same everywhere. Um, dexterity, craft on the belt and uh, amulet. <laughs> yeah, but th th that's pretty much it, I think. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> this is just a very minor thing. I, I lost life here, but I got one that has determination. I just wanted a determ. Okay, I just wanted a double mod. Okay, on the pre on implicit, it's just vanity, uh, and, and that's that's pretty much it. That's not much else. I mean, I have 144 divs and really nothing else to spend on, so I figure I might as well spend on some something fun. Um, uh, uh, passive tree changes. Uh, took out the two megalomaniacs here. Um, popped here to get duration. Uh, popped up here for more sockets. The socket comes. I, I started buying like these jewels, so that's the, another reason why I've kind of like pivoted to having more jewels. Uh, strength, double attack speed, and max life uh, is really nice. Uh, and I've got actually three of them. So before I got Megalomanics, I had like zero of these. I had to actually sit on a market and wait for them to pop up. And like three or four of them popped up. And I bought them more for like under a div each. Uh, but yeah, they, they give an alternative. I think an alternative to Megalos. I think Megalos are like just accessible and you don't have to worry. So very easy to get two notables. Uh, but I think after a while, I just want to... To get more sockets mainly because uh, the endurance charge efficiency here is great you get strength while parting here anyway and uh, now that i have uh, consecrated ground uh, from purifying flames this is actually really nice too because 25 percent uh, increase effect mm, let's see 
Okay, I don't know. That's not something I want to buy. Okay. Um, so, and then also uh, with the extra points on Megalos, uh, I think I, I already had this. Yeah, this hasn't changed. I already had this. So you might ask why I'm actually going for uh, automation studies instead of like getting more endurance charges. And I actually value these a lot because uh, the armor is, it's like total of 70% increased armor and 4% PDR. And this 4% PDR is like unconditional, right? You have them up all the time. So I prefer this setup uh, in general. Uh, this is 2143. You may not be able to find one. Uh, it's, they're quite rare. So yeah, just, just this is just me telling you that I like this. I'm not saying that you should get this. Um, I actually improved the Megalomaniacs as well. So I found a Overlord and Martial Mastery with a capacitor. Uh, uh, Meglo. So I actually can move, I actually could take out the, the capacitor version for this too and put the Feast of Flesh one in. So I Feast of Flesh here, capacitor here. And that's why I kind of have like only two Meglos left. My two Meglos are extremely efficient. It has both Master Mastery and Overlord. Uh, no, no, either Overlord or uh, Weight Advantage. And uh, Capacitor is just mandatory, I think. Uh, way to get the Dual Shock. Uh, and Shock basically is the only thing that really kills you as a Bone Shatter, uh, as a Trauma Stacking uh, Jug. Uh, and then Feast of Flesh. Yeah, this is like Life Gain or Hit. It means that you don't have to go Instant Leech. Uh, it's kind of like how Connors uh, solves his survivability issues. He has like double hand Hunter Rings with like Life Gain on Hit. This is like life gain on hit, but you don't need double hunter rings. <laughs> um, yeah, so one point here is for rage generation. I don't think you need more than that, so I just left it as, is, as it is. It's quite possible to go one, two, three points here and then get the intimidate, but that will require level 100. Uh, and I might probably for level 99 not go even endurance charges. I would go for the life nodes here, so life and like armor here. More armor is nice. Um, it's still blood magic. I think I debated this with like someone, another person who's who uh, making this build. Uh, or not debated, just talk, talk to him about it briefly. I don't think it makes much sense to go like mana. Like, I think blood magic in this current patch uh, solves a lot of things simultaneously. So, like, mana cost for melee attacks went up, correct? And because it went up, it was like kind of like, eh. Um, and so the way blood magic kind of solves for mana issues it also like solves for reservation like you don't have to get reservation uh points on your on your, on your tree um it gives you petrified blood over leech which is, i think is also really amazing and since you can like go uh, low life at 55 this also mitigates the downside of petrified so you actually have this almost the same ehp i think slightly less right not, not, not almost slightly less um but yeah so blood magic is something i'll probably stick to uh, all the clusters are, I think I upgraded the clusters a little I went for like Chaos Rares or something so two of them are Chaos Rares and this one is like all attributes I could actually swap this out for Chaos Rares as well but the Chaos Rares ones are generally expensive I think they were 1.5 div each Uh, if you, there were some that were like 3 or 4 or 5 divs that I wasn't interested in I just waited for like cheap ones and I sniped them Um, but, 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 okay yeah this is the next major change so I was looking, I, 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 I tend to look at all the, 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 the top delvers because they're all running this build and I just want to see what they find to be efficient and I noticed that a whole bunch of them actually add this and, and initially I was like, eh, what's the point, you know? Um, but then I thought about it for a while I was like, well, there really isn't many like ways of consistently generating frenzy charges and frenzy charges do give you a significant amount of damage for this particular setup because of the attack speed, uh, not just the more damage and not only that, you get 4 points, one of them goes to culling, which is 10% more, and then frenzy charge generation, consistent frenzy charge generation is like kind of worth it. So even though all the other strength stackers are trying to get as much strength as possible and trying to be as efficient as possible, they still get this. So kind of understand the reasoning now that I've tried it, like probably this is like super good and you don't want to drop this. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to passives. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> I I I decided like I had too much money to spare, so I decided to get, uh, <coughs> I decided to get foiled versions of all my jewels, all the oh not all my jewels, most of them. So watch as I is like foiled now, and I divine this in like three thrice to twenty percent. So I'm selling my old one off for like eight or nine divines. 
Uh, and I bought the Forbidden Flesh and I, I bought that uh, product as well. I don't know, I just, just, it's just rich people issues, I think. Like, you can stop having, you can stop, you know, figuring out what to do with your money and then you start spending a stupid shit. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, maybe I should buy it for, for Genesis. One of the major things I bought was actually a Progenesis. I'm not sure if I covered it in the last video, but. Basically, Progenesis helps you to buffer your hits even more and makes your entire ring even more efficient. So, uh, it makes your entire and leech even more efficient. So, uh, entire ring leech become more efficient with Progenesis. Uh, Progenesis as well, um, by mitigating your max hit, uh, basically gives you a, a pretty much free HP, especially working with like Petrified Blood. So, I'd say that like when you can afford it, uh, you can actually probably afford it because, like, honestly, this build just generates currency. Uh, and you don't really need much then you know you should have like enough currency to buy progenesis by about I don't know a weekend or something yeah once you've got the baseline uh, stuff in order okay what else uh, do I I mean I, what do I else do I plan for this build uh, actually not much to be honest like I think I'm happy if it is as it is with this which means like <laughs> if I still want to keep playing PoE it's either challenges or a third build and I'm quite leaning towards a third build but we'll see you know, I'm, I've been pretty tired these few days uh, mostly because I, I, I think because I, I, I have this thing where if I'm it's a PoE league and I got things to do okay I've got like I feel like I still got like things I want to accomplish sometimes I wake up like 3 or 4 in the morning like after 3 hours of sleeping and I go like okay well I can't go back to sleep I, I, I just need to do something and I just boot up POE and just get stuff done <laughs> there's just there's just too many things to do if you feel like doing them and yeah I mean it's exciting so you, know, I, you don't get a lot of sleep uh, and I, I take care of my kid like 3 hours a day uh, 2 or 3 hours a day because uh, I take her I bring her to school I get her ready for school and then I, I uh, bring her home and feed her and shower her so yep uh, and I and, and I have a day job so okay may, maybe maybe I can say you know you don't have any excuses because I, I I'm I'm probably doing way more than you are <laughs> anyway uh, what else do I need to cover for this build um, oh okay uh, I think I think Maybe the last section is going to be like a blind Q&A based on the number of questions, the type of questions I get uh, from uh, YouTube on the comments. So m most people ask like, what do I do? What, what you, how would I scale this build further? And the answer is, I don't think you scale this build, build further. I think at some point you realize that the build is as good as you can take it at, at 60 mil DPS and like 250k EHP. Um, and you know, if you really want to like go into the, the billions of DPS color thing, you have to do corner setup. There's no way about it. Like there's too much power that comes from scaling uh original sin and double double flat scaling uh from from the weapon and then the elberons. And then going like what was it again? Uh yeah, going like three point like two point eight K strength. There's not, there's no other, like, that. that is the end game setup. There's nothing else that's going to be that in terms of, like, raw DPS. I mean, tankiness-wise, I feel like this is tanky than Connor setup um, until he gets Valakos and Mage Blood. Uh, but then, you, you know, you pay out the nose for Valakos and Mage Blood, right? So, uh, Valakos, all Sublime Vision and Mage Blood and, was it Undeniable? That is the, that's what Steve is doing. Uh, you pay our nose for that one too. So, yeah, any any like clear progression for this is going to be in the hundreds of divines. It's not going to be like cheap, right? And for me, like, if my build requires a mage blood, I'm not interested in playing it. I, I mean, if it's mage blood, nice to have, I'll buy it because I have can afford it. But if it requires a mage blood, I'm not interested in it. So, I think for now, I'm just happy with where it is. I don't think I want to progress this into Pawner's build, and I'd rather just play another build. Yeah. Um, okay, um, one of the other major questions is how do you scale this early? Uh, and I think this is important because uh, most most of you that are trying to play this build are definitely going to pour over corners and um, I, telling you what the requirements are is going to be a lot easier. 
So I think early game, uh, you gonna, you you all like all the rares I have here are easily accomplishable. Maybe you have to drop one suffix, like you don't have the attack speed or focus, uh, and you get resistances instead. And this one you maybe don't have like empty suffix or something. You probably have resistances and PDR. Um, so so those things are easily accomplishable. The belt is like super cheap for single uh, implicit. So like just strength alone is gonna give you like it cost you like one div. Uh, amulet is gonna be expensive. Unfortunately, this one goes up to like 12, 13 divs. Uh, but personally speaking, you can because of how this build is structured, you can go for like mirrored amulets. So I would suggest just going mirrored amulets. They cost like a div or less. Uh, and you get you, you you can like get decent power out of it early and then swap to a, a synthesized amulet later on. Same thing with rings. I'm still using like synthesized. I'm still using a, a, a mirrored one. You know, so I'm not actually swapped to a synthesized one. So I I think do try to snipe cheat mirrored uh, rings and amulets uh, early, especially yeah early. Okay, so Winter Weave is I think like super mandatory because I think dealing with Chill is is like super important. Um, one Chill reduces your damage, and then turning it into po a positive increases your damage by a multiplier. So definitely get Winter Weave, and on instances try to get one with a strength implicit. Uh, you don't have to get the the quality on it. Catalyst can be a bit expensive. You need like seventeen percent I think uh, for it to get like plus uh, to seven percent instead of six, and that's just one difference, one percent difference. So I I don't think you should do that. Um, when uh, just saying when you go winter weave as well, please don't like if you're going soul the branking. Okay, if you don't have freeze immunity from another source, you have to go soul branking. Please do not get captured glaze, right? 50% reduce if I got chill on you. Please do not get that because then it kind of makes this worse. Okay, so if you're getting branking, don't level that one, uh, as in don't get the, the pantheon for that one. Uh, what the priorities early? The priorities early is getting a pillar of the cage god with attack speed. Crit is not as important, but I would say that overall, in time, you still want it because of the the, the quality of life or blitz charges. Um, so pillar of cage god is like, I think mandatory. Without it, you don't like do damage. So, and funnily enough, if I take this, I swap this out for like someone running corners build that doesn't have the double proj, doesn't have the return proj and chan. They actually do less damage, <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah, pillage is just too good, right? With trauma stacks, um, so yeah. Attack speed implicit is extremely important. Crit strike chance not as important, but to be honest, you can get attack speed and crit strike chance from the market from like fifty C or below. So no excuses there. You you should be able for this. Um, linking is pretty easy. Just use benching for four links, uh, four sockets, and then tainted, uh, taint jewelers for six sockets. Bench for four links, tainted for six, right? For uh, tainted fusings for six. It's very straightforward and really cheap now. Like tainted fusings are like fifteen C or something. They're not actually that expensive. Okay. Um, when it comes to jewels, the priority is actually uh both your flesh and flame for blitz. Blitz is like super important. Um, it's under 10 dips right now. Please take a full advantage of the fact that the market just doesn't care about these. Um, and the reason being is like 40% more attack speed is pretty much how you scale your trauma damage. You need it to scale trauma damage. So get this as fast as possible. Uh, and then also the Sublime Vision and Forbid uh, and, and Watcher's Eye. Here's the thing, okay, I know Subline Vision has gone to 16 divs for, for uh, Cold, Pure Your Eyes. Uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, I'm, I'm actually not surprised at all. <laughs> but I understand it can be frustrating because you thought the build was going to be like... You, you thought this was going to be like 5, five divs or something and then now it's like 13, six, 13 to 16, uh, bare minimum. Here's my suggestion, okay, if you want to go Purity or Lightning, you can. Uh, the, the the things you need to solve are different though. So if you go purely or lightning, uh, you can't go. You, there's no point going winter weave because you're not gonna reflect. You're not gonna change all your alley to cold, so you're not gonna have high chill values on you. So I would say like you just go for another rare ring, uh, and then with purity of uh, lightning, you need intelligence. So you actually have to get intel on your gear instead of like decks, or instead of like more strength. Unfortunately, depending on how suffix suffix style that you are. Um, so yeah, Purity of Lightning is also possible. So Purity of Lightning, Sublime Vision, Purity of Lightning, uh, Watcher's Eye, you can do that. Uh, do take note that because you're taking all your elemental as Lightning, 
you have the probability of getting very high shocks on yourself. Uh, so you need shock immunity as fast as possible because you're gonna kill yourself with bone shatter or with trauma if you don't get shock immunity. Okay, so if you go period lightning, that's the thing you gotta watch out for. Okay, next thing. Um, helmet mod. Right, the helmet mod is elevated. You one percent increased critical strike chance per ten strength. At about 1.8k strength, it's about 180% increased critical strike chance. That kind of gives you 25% crit strike chance base, which gives you consistent blitz uptime. Okay, without it, without this mod, it's very hard to get consistent bl uh, blitz uptime. So how do you solve it if you don't have this helm mod? Okay, because the helm mod may be a bit expensive. The answer is pretty simple. You don't get megalomaniacs, <laughs> so you can save money there. Just leave that megalomaniacs empty. And what you do is you get this thing called Tech Rod's Gaze. Uh, where is my... You get this thing called Tech Rod's Gaze. And then you fill the rest of the other uh, uh, jewel sockets with something like this. Uh, uh, you just go for like Murderous Eye Jewels, okay? And what you go for is you want life, accuracy, armor, attack speed, and flat fist to stuffs. The, these five things, any combination of these five things. If you can get Corrupted Blood Immunity, that's cool too, that's nice. I uh, actually don't really need it because you have to have high, pretty high PDR. But yeah, Tech Rod's Gaze plus like three other, at least a minimum of two or three other Murderous Eye Jewels will give you the same effect as this helmet. And that will, sh will help you get like these uh, consistent uh, Blitz up time. So that's another way to solve the problem if you uh, can't afford this helm or can't find this helm. What else is there? Uh, clusters, yep, yeah, good. Try to get these, unfortunately. Mandatory. Uh, Megalomaniacs, kind of mandatory. As I said, you can go tag rods if you don't have enough crit chance. I think with that, you should be able to hit like 20 mil to 30 mil DPS pretty easily, you know? And, uh, and you have pretty decent amount of tankiness. Alright, what else is there? Uh, Um, oh, okay, so maybe let's cover like what if you actually level this up from like scratch If you're gonna start this, league start this, okay, let's say you're league starting now and You just want to league start this now, okay, and you have no currency to begin with um, Here's your priority, Pillar of the Gage God, Plage God, uh, Cage God is number one Number two is going to be the same tech as I use on my Gladiator and that is to go What's this? Helmet again Okay, go bring a rain. So you go bring a rain. Try to get as high life as possible with Pillar of the Cage God. For Belt, you go Megan Lords, okay? Go Megan Lords Girdle. So these three items alone should give you enough damage to push in the maps. <laughs> um, rings. Uh, rings and amulet. I, I mean, th those are up to you. I don't have any preference. But yeah. Uh... Do you do Megan Lords and do uh bring a rain to push in the maps with Pillar of the Cage God? Uh, you should be it should be enough. Okay, um how to scale damage further if you're using a blood so early on you don't have access to high trauma stacks, which is understandable. You can't either tank tank through them or you don't have enough attack speed. Um you're gonna use blood as the primary scaling method. So you wanna get life as much as high as possible, maybe seven eight K. And then you you, you, you you use blood support to get flat. You can go this armor, you can go calms. I think calms is like super good now that it has 1k armor, uh, 1k life, sorry. It also has a decent amount of armor. And then for the helm, you can like, if you really want to like do it more damage at the expense of tankiness, go on Abyssus or something. So Abyssus, Megan Lords, and then uh, calms. And you should be enough, have enough to like push in the maps also. Hmm, okay, what else? What else is there? I think that's that's pretty much it. That that's pretty much it. Well, uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this help. I don't think I'll be posting more videos about the junk. I think maybe maybe like once I hit like 99 I might like to do a bit of pinnacle content and then show off how well it does there, but I'm like kind of not keen on it. I just wanna chill, I think. Maybe like build the next build have i have some ideas for what i want to build next but uh, i haven't really like fleshed it out hmm okay what else is there 
that's, that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> See you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and all the best with your uh, strength stacking, multi strike of the Zenith. Bye.